Welcome to the Bitcoin Zodiac, the podcast that explores the intersection of finance and astrology, where we use a combination of spirituality and logic to help us connect the dots in the markets. Hosted by Corinne Florence and Claire Marinan, who both come from a diverse background, bringing with them a wealth of knowledge and experience in the realms of astrology, cryptocurrency, trading, philosophy, investment strategy, and of course, Bitcoin. In each episode, we explore the economics of the markets following the evolution of Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies through each moon cycle and astrological transit. Join us on this journey as we explore the intersection of these two worlds that are often thought to be at odds with one another, finance and astrology. Whether you're a seasoned crypto investor, a day trader, or just starting to dip your toes into the world of Bitcoin and blockchain, the Bitcoin Zodiac is the podcast for you. So sit back, relax, and come and expand your consciousness with us as we explore the world of the financial markets through an astrological lens. Hello, good evening. Hi. Good afternoon. How are you? Good. Bitcoin over 36K. How are you? Go, Bitcoin. Uh, we are here on the 9th of November. And yeah, Bitcoin is uh, is just love and life. Yeah, Bitcoin is is going. And um, yeah, I think it's it's really interesting because, you know, as we said in our last episode, the levels that we were really looking to break and hold was around that 32 mark. And so we did, you know, Bitcoin did that beautifully. So um, I'm pretty, I'm pretty bullish, um, cautiously bullish, let's put it that way. Um, but it's, it's interesting. I heard um, Raul Paul talk the other day, um, saying that it feels like we're in that last month of spring, where we're getting like a few nice days, and you can feel summer is on the way. But there is that slight chance of thunderstorms. So I feel like that's a really beautiful description of where we're at with Bitcoin right now. It is. It is a really beautiful summer uh, summary. And um, I mean, I can't wait for Bitcoin summer, but um, potentially, potentially another thunderstorm to come, thunderstorm to come. Let's see. But before we dive into that, how was this last eclipse for you, Claire? We had the full moon and eclipse in Taurus. Yeah, I I mean, I found it really, I really enjoyed it actually. And I really did feel like it was the closing of a cycle, the end of a cycle. And, um, you know, I definitely felt that energy and I thought that that was really beautiful. And it was like the closing of a cycle and we're going to do things differently from now on. You know, it was like, it, it really did feel like that. And um, yeah, I had a really good full moon and eclipse yay i love that what about you yeah i was about to say i think it's been um i think it's been very turbulent times um and i also feel a lot of these closing of just tying up the loose ends in many different areas of uh, of life and you know for those that didn't get a chance to listen to our last episode, please do so. We spoke about the eclipse on the Taurus and Scorpio axis and how this is really closing things up from November 2021. Um, And, you know, this next new moon that we have or that for you listening here today, happy new moon in Scorpio. Um, This is literally that last, uh, the last moon that's wrapping all of that up. Um, and so it's just been um it's just been a bit turbulent and i th- i think maybe a better word is like intense or like even passionate and you know because this is a lot of scorpio energy that we've been having um we've also had mercury in scorpio the sun and mars in scorpio and so it's just been very intense uh, or on other aspects you could also say passionate times um and i feel like it's been a really big reset on a lot of different things personally I feel like it's resetting where now I can move on into new things in my life Mm -hmm. um and also like 
maybe I can even use the word intense in terms of like the desire of wanting to like move more and more towards my passion um, and what I really truly want. And that's kind of like the energy I've been feeling that I feel really aligns with the Scorpio-ness that we have uh, really coming up today. Yeah, absolutely. And it, I, I have those notes for this new moon as well, but this is, um, this is a pretty intense new moon actually. And, um, you know, it is one of those times where it is like entering into a new phase, entering into a new period. It really is a turning point new moon. Um, so leading to like important choices and important decisions. So it's pretty interesting. And, you know, Scorpio season, we touched on it a little bit last episode, but it really sort of like brings us into this like mystical realm on a personal level where we can kind of confront our deepest inner shadows. And so like, instead of avoiding these shadowy aspects, like we embrace them and grow through that experience. So it's almost like an initiation of becoming our own alchemist and, um, you know, working with this intense energy to like empower us to really confront our entire selves and being ruthlessly honest about every aspect of ourselves. So it, it is a pretty transformational and intense energy. And, um, you know, in relation to financial astrology, Scorpio energy can really lead to you know, unpredictable markets and a focus also on like high risk, high return investments. And, um, you know, but on the other hand, as a participant in that market as well, it's using that Scorpio energy to an intensity determination to, you know, investigate a lot of things, you know, uncover hidden opportunities and things like that. So um, to be able to research and uncover valuable insights that can you know align with more profitable investments in the future mm. as as you were saying that it just made me think of this instagram reel that i saw today and i just got it out because i want to read it um when you realize that integrating your own bad parts so your your shadow you've been so let me re-say that when you realize that integrating your own bad parts you've been suppressing and denying is the last step to actually waking up and becoming enlightened. Yeah. And I feel like, you know, the Scorpio definitely is a sign of the shadow and yeah. by bringing the shadow and bringing that to the love and light that we love to focus on, but that's where we actually get to um, wake up and become enlightened or become the highest version of yourself or whatever that means to you. And I feel like that this past eclipse and coming into this, you know, and this Scorpio season and coming into the new moon on a personal level, that has really come up for me. And I see it coming up for other people too, even yeah. if they're not. It, it's like it's like they they don't even know that they're ready yet and life is kind of like pushing it upon them and making it be like hi here is the bad here is the shadow time for you to face it because that's what you need to do to go to the next level um yeah wow just as you were saying that just like pieced a lot of things together for me as well so then in terms of you know the financial side of things and I even think about like as a trader, yeah. um, oh boy, does the shadow and the darkness come up. But every time it does come up, it is uh, it is such a new step or a, a, a higher step into a higher version of yourself. And um, yeah, when we accept it and embrace it. I find trading just such a, a, such a fast track to personal growth. It's really funny. I never would have expected that, but it really can like pinpoint like areas of myself, like my own emotions, because it's so tight. You know, when you're working with your money, it's, yeah. it's not, you know, it's, there's obviously elements of greed and things like that, but the flip side is also like, it's 
security, it's stability, it's, you know, that kind of stuff as well. So that can be really triggering. And sometimes it's like, you know, trading can bring that out in you. And I can recognize that. And I'm like, oh, I need to kind of look at that. Um, so it, it's interesting because I never thought that that process would be like trading would be a personal development process. Literally, it's huge. I actually had one of my students this week ask me, you know, how do you think that, And I mean, this is what I recall, like not his exact words. It was something along the lines of what would you say is the best way to really track your progress and see like how far you've come? And I was like, it's really you within your trading. Like as cliche as that sounds, like if you have improved in your trading, you get to really take a step back and look at how you now don't react anymore, but you're mm -hmm. responsive when yeah. something maybe doesn't go your way. How are your emotions? How aware are you? Um, or even when you make mistakes, you know, how aware are you of your emotions and where your mistakes were? And do you take a step back and reassess and learn the lesson and then keep moving forward? Or do you just chuck a tantrum and throw your laptop out the window? You know what I mean? Like it is, it is the fast track, one of the best, fastest, fast tracks that I have ever in my life to personal development and yeah. such a great way to look at how far you've come. Yeah, absolutely. And I, as you were saying that the sort of reacting versus responding, like I, you know, I don't get this right all the time, 1000%. But in my own personal life, there's times that I can look back and go, oh, wow, I wouldn't have, I would have really reacted in that situation. Whereas now I was able to take a breath and respond from a, you know, a place of power and a place of stability and you know that's how you track your growth and like you said it's exactly the same when you're trading it's like you know did I respond did I react emotionally and just you know revenge trade um mm -hmm. and over trade or did I take a step back have a look at what I'm doing have a look at the setup again and see what mistakes I made in a really productive way so it is it's a real life hack actually which I didn't see coming yeah yeah so true and actually so just while we're we're on this topic and shifting on over to Bitcoin specifically, you know, mm -hmm. um, I really thought that this past eclipse, I expected something bigger. I expected more reaction <laughs> rather than yeah. Bitcoin just being so cool, calm, collected, and just responding and flowing along. I'm like, what? Um, but yeah, this past eclipse, you know, we did see some interesting news, uh, with Binance, um, as mm -hmm. expected. I don't remember if we touched on this. We wouldn't have touched on it last, um, last episode yet, but both Binance and Tether. Yeah. Uh, I'm just getting the article back up. I may have closed it. Um, but they, um, Cynthia something wrote a letter, a letter to the DOJ actually asking for Binance as well as Tether mm, being criminally charged with yeah. various different things. Um, my apologies that I do not have that article up anymore right now. But I think it was Cynthia Loomis, which was interesting as well, because she's actually previously been quite a pro-crypto politician. Right. Um, so that's why I thought, and you know what, it's interesting because again, it's like, to me, I think that's really big news, but right. it wasn't blasted everywhere, you know? So it's like that emotional reaction. It's so interesting how the news cycle is really manipulated, you know, because that to me is, is actually pretty big news, you know, like one of the biggest crypto exchange and the biggest stable coin um, I think it was the um, New York, for some reason, I feel like it was the New York um, DOJ or something like that. There it is. Um, yep. So okay. I did get it up. Um, so it's DOJ of Washington, Attorney General of the United States, the U.S. Department of Justice, 
Washington, D.C. So Illicit Finance Activities of Binance and Tether. And it is by uh, Cynthia Loomis. Asked the Department of DOJ to criminally charge Binance and Tether. And so it was a lot of like, let me just read even the first line here. Um, have facilitated significant illicit finance activity over the last two years, including providing significant terrorism financing for Hamas malvolent attack on Israel. So wow. It, yeah, and it's it's quite heavy. So um the document is available online, Congress of the United States, Washington, DC. Um and you can go through and read that. I probably shouldn't say certain words because we might be flagged. <laughs> so go ahead and read that, guys. It's uh, all over the internet. Just got to mm. Google it. And um, yeah, I I'm also shocked that there was just no. It felt like there was no repercussions. Completely swept under the rug. Barely anybody really spoke about it. And I was like, this is massive. Um. And that was very in align with what we saw with the eclipse for Binance specifically. Yeah. Um, and even though we couldn't really see anything too clearly on, on Bitcoin's birth chart, you know, I just thought that it would affect the crypto markets in some way, um, going back and looking at those similar events with FTX and um, Terra Luna, et cetera, but just nothing. Yeah, I expected some bigger drama through the eclipse, like I really did. But then when you go and look at some of those stories like that, there were things that happened, but they just weren't turned into a drama in the media, which yeah. I, I thought was an interesting observation as well. Um, right. But there is some stuff happening with FTX as well, um, with the closing of that. Did you want to talk about that with the closing of their tri that trial? Yeah, definitely. Well, I mean, finally, we have SBF, who um, is, uh, you know, I just think that justice has been served personally. And, um, you know, so he will be imprisoned. And um, the big thing, however, is that bankrupt FTX has uh, $744 million in assets that they want to liquidate and that you know is from uh according to november 3rd court filing so that's very recent and what is that going to mean for crypto not a hundred percent sure and with this new moon where i'm really seeing that potentially show up in mm -hmm. bitcoin's natal transit for this new moon is that the new moon is square Neptune and this has everything to do with dealing with past and unresolved issues this is like an unclosed chapter that still needs to be closed and again this really aligns with this is the last new moon that's really closing up you know this a uh, cycle of eclipses on the Taurus Scorpio axis since November 2021 and what happened November 2021 was the the whole FTX uh, fiasco so that's really interesting mm. um unless there's something else and you know there could be something else that's unresolved issues that still really need to be wrapped up and the other thing with with Neptune that, you know, I've been saying for the longest time, we're still seeing it through the astrology is like, there just is this illusion and the astrology keeps telling us look deeper than just the surface level story. There's more to the narrative. Mm -hmm. So last episode, we spoke about whether that's about, you know, the big institutions wanting to get more and more into crypto. And so they are buying over the counter. That means that we don't see that directly um, affecting price because it's just them buying it directly from the miners. It's an agreement. It hasn't actually been executed. So we don't see it on the charts. We don't see it already reflecting in price. So I don't know if that's like, where that's happening or there was something else that we are are missing 
Was there anything else you wanted to add on on that or specifically even with uh, with FTX? Um, not really in regards to FTX, but I think, you know, we've just had, as we're recording this on the 9th of November, we've just had a big run up to um, nearly 37 for Bitcoin. And um, so some of the reasoning around that is that we have just moved into this um, six day decision period for the SEC to make a decision on the approval of several Bitcoin ETF applications. Mm -hmm. So um, we are in, there's an awful lot I feel hanging on these um, ETF decisions. And so a lot of people are sort of saying that that's the reason for this most recent move up. So as we're coming into this very intense new moon, I sort of can see Bitcoin moving up into that. And then as we know, the new moon around the new moon is generally a local top for us. So I yep. could see maybe testing 38 to 40 K and then um, having a pretty significant pullback, maybe depending on that decision, is it going to be postponed again? Or, you know, even I even have a feeling that there are big institutional players that are actually on trading desks and that, that will be taking profits around the 40k mark and so seeing a bit of a, a, a significant pullback there because really what the new moon represents is like the darkest and most mysterious time in the lunar cycle so the moon becomes temporarily invisible to us and a lot of people perceive darkness to be negative but darkness actually isn't inherently negative it represents the creative void from which life and energy can emerge so this sort of offers a beautiful break for our energy and our nervous system it's like a quietening time for the mind and like also really amplifying our intuition but it sort of creates this void um you know with which everything life springs from basically and so I think really with this new moon, we'll talk about some of the other aspects a little later as well, which make it quite intense, is that, you know, I, I do see a bit of a, a pullback coming. Um, I'm not really sure to what level or to what degree, um, but I, I can sort of see that that pivotal level between 38 and 40 being being some fairly strong resistance for Bitcoin. Agreed. Agreed 100%. And, um, you know, those are very, very key levels. And I believe we've mentioned, man, maybe even one of our first uh, episodes where we spoke about, you know, this period of time with the North Node having shifted into Aries, where yeah. we could see also like a bit of a fake out or a bit of like a, a quick push, ignition, excitement up to about that 40K. And that being a trap for the retailers and then um, a significant pullback. So whether that's the scenario or not, don't fully know, guys. Um, what I do see with the astrology for this transit as well um, is a potential, seeing as we didn't see anything significant happen with the Taurus eclipse, that may have been the trap rigor and because of this eclipse axis cycle ending maybe the actual um, energy that we expected to see on the Taurus eclipse we might see around this new moon or after this new moon and play out afterwards which would kind of fit the narrative a bit better now that I think about it because new moon as Claire just said typically is local tops so if we do need to see a significant pullback and, you know, normally with that eclipse energy, we do see maybe even like a 20, 30, 40 percent is a bit too much, but maybe a 20 or 30 percent pullback because of that yeah. eclipse energy. This would be the perfect time for it to happen. So as we go from the new moon down towards the full moon. And Gemini is going to be our next full moon on the 27th of November. We could very much see that that pullback. Um, it's also really important to keep in mind that we are in an eclipse season mm -hmm. all the way until the 9th of December. So we're, we're not out of this yet. Like whatever needs to happen during eclipse season, we have until the 9th of December. So we still have all of November to go. Um, 
Well, there are a couple of things as well within the macro sort of side of things as well that are kind of interesting to note. And again, along that same theme of like, to me, they seem like actually pretty major things, but because the media didn't make a big deal of them, they sort of just slid on by without people paying too much attention. And that's, you know, that's very much Scorpio energy as well. It brings to the surface things that were previously hidden and things that yeah. need to be dealt with. I mean, for example, we have, um, you know, JP Morgan Chase sort of slid by quietly, you know, exposing that they have $40 billion in unrealized losses. Um, you know, Bank of America, Wells Fargo and Citigroup all face exposure to U.S. Treasuries. And that is, um, you know, that was you know, noticed on their Q3 statement, um, which is actually 20% from the up from the previous quarter. So 20% bigger loss than the previous quarter. And so I think that's a really big deal. Um, these, you know, these problems with within the banking system, to me is a really big deal. And again, something that may be brought up to the surface during um, this Scorpio season. And, um, you also have a couple of other sort of hidden things that, that just sort of slid by. Um, just bring it up. But then you also have on the other side of things, again, things that didn't get a big write-up. You have HSBC, you know, one of the biggest banks in the world, teaming up with Ripple-owned Metaco for digital asset custody. So a lot of these big banks are also gearing up for, you know, to be able to custody crypto assets. So mm -hmm. again, to me, that's something that's quite a big deal, but it just, you know, it was not highlighted massively. So I think that that's all part of that. And I think interestingly enough as well with Scorpio, energy it's there's a there's always a lot of talk about oh very secretive and hidden and things like that and that is true but there's also a lot of power in privacy in building in privacy and so leaning into that energy as well is is really powerful during this time rather than the sort of you know sneaky secretive side of it there's also you know an element of like keeping things private and building in private that's really powerful with Scorpio too Mm, yeah. And and we can't we cannot forget, which aligns a lot with a lot of things that you just said, that even though this was on the fourth of October, we had the Mars conjunct south Mars conjunct the South Node. This mm. is a repeat of 1929, 1987, and 2008. We all know what happened those years. So again, that doesn't mean that because we see something in astrology, it's going to happen immediately on that date, but it's the trigger. And a mm. lot of what you just said, especially about the banks, it's like, hello, here it is. Now, how is Bitcoin going to react to that? We don't know because Bitcoin's never been through something like this. Bitcoin was literally being written out. The white paper was being written out in 2008 you know, Satoshi Nakamoto during the last big financial crisis was finding a solution and creating the solution through Bitcoin. So how Bitcoin's going to react through all of this, we can mm. only, you know, kind of uh, try and yeah, forecast. We can't, <laughs> exactly, <laughs> but we can't back test that. So it makes it, it makes yeah. it a little more challenging because it, it is, you know, Bitcoin has surprised me a couple of times because mm -hmm. You know, we're we're looking at the natal chart, and also we're we're obviously everyone is subjected to these transits, you know, and where we can see something, you know, a transit that's sort of detrimental to the the macro or you know what's going on in the world collectively. Sometimes that acts as a trigger to send people into Bitcoin as a safe haven asset. So it's really interesting to watch how Bitcoin responds through these um, sorts of scenarios that it's never lived through before. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think, you know, really looking at this and just as I relook over the astrology right now of Bitcoin, 
I think we really have two options. One, you know, um, whatever was triggered from the Taurus eclipse, we're going to see the result of that happen around this new moon in Scorpio. And I think that that could be a potential significant pullback, but nothing like crazy, you know, not a black swan. I don't see a black swan. Now, on the other hand, what I'm actually seeing is that this new moon is again happening in the fourth house of Bitcoin. And that is very similar to the eclipse uh, that we saw on the 14th of October, the Libra eclipse, which also happened in the Bitcoin's fourth house. And that's representative of real estate crops, mines, everything from the earth. And the way that I like to look at that is the Bitcoin miners and something to do with the Bitcoin miners. So when we look at that, we look at, okay, well, what happened October 14th or that result from that eclipse? And that was that significant push up. You know, we really see from the eclipse date, Bitcoin uh, now has gone up almost 40%. We're about 35, 37% up from that day. So could this be a similar effect? Um, you know, with the Bitcoin miners, we also spoke about, once again, are these big institutions buying OTC over the counter directly from the miners? We, we don't know. So that's kind of the two main things that I see. And I think one way or another, what we can be prepared for is just a big, intense, explosive move. And why I say that is because we have the new moon conjunct Mars, which is a very big sign of intensity. And then mm. that conjunction are both, so it's in opposition, we have Mars and new moon, that means the sun and the moon, opposition uh, Uranus. And we know that that planet is, uh, it loves to shake things up and to really create, you know, a volcanic eruption. Now this also, so Uranus, we have to remember, has been for quite some time now been going through Bitcoin's 10th house. The 10th house is government, politics, senior management, and leadership. So... I I just don't know. I can just read the astrology. <laughs> um, yeah. And it, it's, I, it, you know, Claire and I were talking about before we even started recording the podcast, we were like, there's, there's, this is one of the first times that not very much is clear. Like, I feel like in the past, we've been like, yeah, this is the direction it's going to go. It's quite clear in the astrology. Whereas here, we just, there's multiple options. And this is why I always say astrology doesn't tell us the future because, you know, the future can always change, I believe. And that's just based on decisions. And especially when we talk about Bitcoin, it's the decisions that us people make, because I truly believe that Bitcoin is none other than just a reflection of the human collective consciousness um, more than anything else that we have ever seen. And so it really is, uh, how are we going to take it? How are we going to react and or take a step back and respond? And um, yeah, how are we just going to feel through all of this? Mm. Yeah, it, it is. It is really interesting that with the moon, the sun and Mars all opposite Uranus, which is in retrograde in Taurus during this new moon. And yeah, that the Uranus, that planet of change, really helps us break free from old patterns in energy and behavior. And breakthroughs are typically preceded by breakdowns. So, mm. you know, that sort of gives more credence again to my sort of expectation that there may be some kind of a pullback. But don't freak out. We need a bit of a pullback to be able to spring up to the next level as well. So it's, you know, um, but it's, it, the breakdown is a signal that change is underway and the breakthrough is coming. So it's, you know, it's an interesting sort of contradiction, I guess. But I do sort of feel like we shifted energy 
quite a few episodes ago, actually, with Bitcoin, when Bitcoin was really quite, you know, when it's a when it, when we're in a bull run, Bitcoin is usually quite correlated to risk on assets, and then, you know, when financial stability, you know, market stability is questionable, it seems to correlate very strongly with gold. But I think we spoke a few episodes ago, it seems to really be coming into its own, like that Leo rising nature of Bitcoin is really coming into its own, being who it is, doing its own thing, it's come here for its own purpose. And it's not going to be stopped or redirected by you know, other things that are going on. And it's almost this kind of um, attitude of like the things that we expect to really to hurt Bitcoin, to damage Bitcoin, or to sort of wound Bitcoin in a way, only strengthen Bitcoin and move it forward. So it's it's quite fascinating because a lot of the things that are going on in the macro world at the moment, the other sort of macro-ish thing that I wanted to talk about was this... Um, the the head of Pantera Capital, um, which manages, you know, about four point two billion dollars in assets, has declared that the S and P five hundred is massively overvalued, and they are expecting a twenty three percent decline in the stock market. So he basically sort of is saying that the Federal Reserve's response to the current economic climate you know, driving rising wage inflation and widespread workers strikes, you know, is sort of a harboring a, a, that um, higher interest rates could dampen the volatility of stocks, bonds and real estate. And so again, it's like, how does crypto specifically Bitcoin respond to this? You know, is is Bitcoin going to be correlated to the stock market and everybody's freaked out of every asset? Um, or do people run to Bitcoin as a safe haven asset now because it's outside of the system? You know, we've created absolute scarcity and, um, you know, it's now seen as a safe haven asset. So it's really fascinating to sort of see how these navigations come through. And, you know, Uranus, the planet of change, I do feel like between Uranus and Pluto, they've really been driving the the adoption and the progress of bitcoin and digital assets you know this kind of revolution and this shift in the system and so even though it is a bit scary and there are a lot of things around you know going on in the world you know post there you know we're at war in several areas of the world and then you know Someone, someone's a big fund manager is calling for a twenty three percent pullback in the S and P, and the banks are declaring forty billion dollars in unrealized losses. So there's a lot of things that are kind of uncertain and scary, but it's it's almost like this breakdown needs to happen for the breakthrough and for you know Bitcoin digital assets and this sort of blockchain revolution to really be able to to move forward. Yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. Transformation. 2023, mm. as we just continue to say, is just such a transformative year. And apart from Uranus, you know, we've also got Saturn um, that I believe it's uh, since the no, the 4th of November, since the 4th of November, that Saturn is officially direct again in, in Pisces. And we see this until May 4th, 2025. So Saturn is going through Pisces. But what's important about Pisces right now, or sorry, Saturn in Pisces right now, is that it's going and transiting through Bitcoin's eighth house, which is the planet of death and rebirth. And we have uh, Saturn in this house for Bitcoin until May 2024. And after May 2024, we then see it go into the ninth house, which is all about foreign affairs. And for me, that's like, okay, more and more countries starting to adopt and expand uh, or accept Bitcoin. So yeah. obviously, in general, we're seeing a lot of transformation all around the world. You know, I believe 
probably in the first episode, we said what we are going to see by the end of 2023 is a whole new world to what we were seeing at the start of 2023. Um, but for Bitcoin specifically, it is also a a death and a rebirth this, this year. And now with Saturn direct again, um, for me, that's like, okay, this is, is a, a positive thing like this is a we are ready to to go and going through the the rebirth side of things mm, so yeah. I don't I don't know yeah I, you really got me pondering here I'm well like, you know I mean the, the reality is is that you know when when a woman gives birth to a new baby like that you know we can we we're so excited to see the new baby, but that birthing process is so painful, you know, it's, it's challenging, it's scary, it's painful. And so anything that is birthed into the world goes through that process. We can't, we don't bypass nature. We follow all of the same rules of nature. And, you know, when we're kind of birthing an entirely new system, a new way of doing things, it's, you know, it's going to be scary. It's going to be, um, it's going to be painful at times, but the other side of it you have a brand new amazing baby that's right and hey like we said we've got to embrace the shadow got to embrace the darkness too <laughs> absolutely and we do have also saturn um you know mercury and sagittarius is square saturn as well which is sort of creating challenges in communication and so that sort of feeds into what i was saying before and you know i remember one episode we did a while ago and I mean, it kind of, I think we were sort of joking about the FTX sort of scenario, and it's how these things are reported on. And at that similar time, there was an exchange that nobody had never ever heard of shut down, and the DOJ had been investigating it for like two years, and it was a big, you know, thing, and the media made such a big deal of it. And it was like, congratulations, you shut down an exchange no one uses and no one's ever heard of, but you completely missed FTX. And so I see that as that Mercury square Saturn creating challenges in communication, that it's also like where the focus is, where the, um, you know, there are different things that, that are happening, but when there's not a spotlight shone on them or they're not amplified through the media, people tend to miss them. And then there are other things that really mean nothing. And they're just sort of a puff piece. And but they're sort of massively amplified or, you know, dramatic and, and things like that. So I think we really need to be conscious and aware of what we're reading and how we're digesting the things that we're reading, like our emotional responses to that, especially, you know, um, during wartime, the fog of war is you know, is very, very real. So it's really important to be able to stay grounded and intuitive about how you're digesting that kind of information. And the same as when it comes to finances. And I sort of have an inclination as well with this aspect that, um, you know, I, I really feel that we are coming into a time of um, like a cloudiness around communication of what's real and what's not. And I'm not saying that the things that we see on the news right now, all of these awful things that are happening are not happening. I'm not, I'm not saying that at all. Um, I do believe that the news is still loosely based on, you know, what is happening in real life. It does have, always have a slant to, you know, a, a certain agenda leaning one way or another, but it is still based on real events. But I do think we are coming into a time of technology deep fakes and you know all of that kind of stuff that we're actually not going to be able to tell when it's not something that's real and i think that that is definitely something that is going to really present itself as america moves into election year and oh, yeah. um, you know we're, it's there's going to be a lot of distractions so it's really we really need to sort of stay grounded and you know keep all of the channels of our intuition open as much as possible so we can really discern um you know what what just doesn't feel right and you know it may look right but it just doesn't feel right and we have to be able to lean into and trust that 
that knowledge, that knowing. Yeah. Yeah. That's so represented by both Saturn and Neptune going through Pisces. And that is until 2025 for Saturn and Mm. Neptune until 2026 remaining in this, this sign that really is about, you know, we talk about it over and over again, just like this illusion that it can, it can create what is reality and what's not. Um, I actually saw in, uh, I believe it was Dubai for Halloween, which PS is just not a holiday that I personally celebrate. Um, But they did do a drone show with like this skeleton walking through the city. And I, my mind just went to like, oh, so if they can project that, what else are they going to project? And I'm like, you know, then I'm, I've heard like conspiracies where they're going to be like doing that soon with aliens and we're going to have an alien attack. And I'm like, well, it might be, but this just really brings it back to like this whole, okay, make sure that you just really in touch with yourself and your intuition and that inner knowing of like what actually is reality and what isn't because there's a lot of that coming up. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. The first thing that I thought that I saw when I first saw that Morgan Freeman, um, you know, deep fake and it wasn't him. My first reaction was like, wow, that's so cool. Like I want one of myself, obviously. (laughs) And then, but really my second reaction was kind of like, wow, what happens when someone makes, you know, something like that? At the time it was like, what happens if someone makes you know, one of Putin declaring war on the United States. Like, you know, the kind of chaos that that would cause before anyone says, hey, hang on a second, that's not even true, is Mm -hmm. just, is really beyond. And so I, you know, we haven't seen anything like that as yet that we know of, but I do sort of feel that that is, that is coming. Yep. Yep. You are a hundred percent correct. It can be very exciting yeah, very um, scary. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I'm ready. I'm ready for the alien invasion. I think it'll be so fun. But um... <laughs> I know, right? Like, come on, just show yourselves. Let's be friends. Yeah. Come on, let's hang out. I've got so many questions. Right. <laughs> but um, actually, before I forget, because this is really important. Speaking of um you know, every time we also talk about like the illusion, I'm like, oh, you know, money being printed. And then that made me remember that by the 17th of November, we have the US Congress, you know, that has some decisions to make. And we have this looming partial potential government shutdown um, coming up. So the deadline is November 17th, because this was already meant to be at the end of September, but they chose to push it 45 days. And Claire, wouldn't it just be such a coincidence if something really massive happened, maybe around the new moon, and then they just couldn't make a decision again? I don't know, my intuition feels like saying that out loud. So yeah, I mean, nothing is a coincidence, darling. Absolutely nothing. Uh, Yep. It's all all very much um, orchestrated. And one of the things that I, that is sort of, you know, I I sort of noticed in this chart as well is um, Ceres. And, um, you know, Ceres is an asteroid. And um, it's very much influential in in regards to agriculture and, um, you know, and things it has, it's very influential in, in relation to agriculture, it's known as the nurturer. And um, so it's often associated with themes of nurturing, abundance, sustenance. And in financial astrology, its influence can really relate to resources, protect, you know, re- particularly those tied to agriculture, food, and environmental sustainability. So the, the new moon is also conjunct series. Um, which can kind of indicate concerns related to food, nourishment, and agriculture. And so I'm sort of wondering, again, it can influence then resource prices, um, such as agricultural commodities, grain, and soft commodities. 
um, which would then impact the supply and demand of financial markets. And we always see these <clears throat> sort of question marks around, you know, again, around wartime and things like that. But, um, you know, supply chain issues, those sorts of things. And it's also linked to sustainability and environmental concerns. So when I read that, I was like, oh, is this, you know, is the um, ESG narrative around Bitcoin going to come up again or, you know, something like that? Um, maybe, hopefully it'll come up again to just be completely put to bed. But, um, you know, I just find that interesting as well. Um, so that's definitely something to keep an eye on just um, around food and agriculture are we going to have more farmers strikes are we going to you know those sorts of things um you know is our supply chains going to be impacted if there is an escalation to this war um or are we going to be feeling the repercussions of the russia ukraine war and limitations in that and um so you know, to tie into your question, no, I don't think any of these things are a coincidence. They all sort of coincide um, with the the narrative. You know, it's it's more about them trying to manage the narrative than um, than actually like creating and driving policy. I think. And yeah. so, you know, is the government shutdown, the potential government shutdown again, something that's going to get people? really excited and distracted and so they don't notice that you know their petrol is through the roof and and things like that you know there's a government shutdown or there's potentially war and i think this war has also created a lot of um social unrest in other countries last episode we talked about australia america uk we've seen a lot of these protests and a lot of civil unrest and again, I don't personally think that that is a coincidence either, because again, when people are really emotional and there is a lot of civil unrest, as I said, people don't notice that, hang on a second, we're paying more for our petrol than anything, you know, than we ever have before. So I think it all sort of coincides and there's lots of little triggers, you know, that can be used as distractions. Oh, is the government going to shut down? Oh, is this happening? You know, all those sorts of things. And so... We do sort of have to be aware and especially as market participants that we're sort of seeing beyond those headlines, I think, and see what sort of what's behind those headlines that we're being distracted from. Yeah, yeah, most definitely. There are a lot of distractions, a lot of what you're saying about the uh, the, the potential food or supply, uh, you know, uh, crisis or limitations coming up. Uh, that is very, very heavily represented by Uranus being in Taurus. And right now it's in retrograde in Taurus until, uh, you know, the end of January 2024. And with the war, it's just this constant um, tenseness. And with Mars being in Scorpio, that's never... Um, that's just not a beautiful thing for when there is the wars that escalating or the tension is escalating. Um, and then we will have that Mars shifting into, into Sagittarius, which is, I always view Sagittarius also as this like expansion of things. And I think that it likes to look at the, the bigger picture. And I hope that we start to look at the bigger picture in, in a more positive way but um we're gonna have to wait and see what what happens with that the other thing also is um we're gonna have venus uh, or venus just moved into libra and mm -hmm. i definitely like to look at venus not only from you know venus being the planet of love but also about money and um hopefully we see kind of like this you know libra is the balance it is the also justice around money and i truly truly hope that we see mm, what's the word i'm looking for like an awakening of uh, hey where are where are my finances at? Let me make sure that I actually start to look at where my money is being put right now. Let me awaken to the fact that there is things such as 
crazy inflation coming. If the war does escalate, then, uh, you know, where is my money going to? And I don't think it's so much a, you know, I don't want to live in lack personally, and I don't want to ever be like, oh, no, like I, I can't afford this and I can't afford that. But if anything, as we start to go into this energy, I really encourage people to be like, okay, how can I expand? Like, how can I afford this? So where is it that I can go and make more income? Because I think that in 2023, where we are in a, in a state of mm, a lot of fear being created, actually turn your focus to the opportunity because we are in 2023 and there are so many opportunities to go and expand your, your income and your wealth. So I hope this is making sense. Um, it just came to me and, you know, with this idea of um, as we go through hard times, this is the opportunity. These are the times to really go and make those generational wealth changes and to really have that big transfer of, uh, there is a massive transfer of wealth happening right now. And it's mm -hmm. about, are you going to be in it and make the most of it and you know come out at a positive out of this or fall into that fear and um and unfortunately maybe not have such a pleasant experience so I think that's a really significant energy that we're shifting into uh so make sure that you know especially with a new moon that is so intense this is the time to go and set our intentions for what's to come in this next cycle and really embracing that okay let me yes be aware of everything that's going on but let me look at the opportunities out of this and what it is that I can I can create so yeah absolutely. yeah absolutely and I think as well you know from our very first episode we have been speaking about 2023 is the year of accumulation and also education. And so we, as we, you know, close out 2023, we are moving into a new cycle. As I said, we can smell the Bitcoin summer on the way where the bull run is coming. It's not quite here yet. We're still in that accumulation phase. There's still time for you to be really honing in on that education and um you know really preparing and setting yourself up for the to you know make the best of this next bull run that is coming so yes. through through this um new moon just embrace the uncertainty and knowing that your intuition is guiding the way and that it is sort of revealing your higher purpose and recognizing the expansiveness of the potential of this energy and, you know, the interconnectedness beyond your personal life, you know, so everything is connected. Nothing is a coincidence. We're all moving through this together. And it's really about, you know, how, how we respond to these scenarios. And that's really what's going to shape it moving, shape us moving forward. And the same for Bitcoin. 100%. Well, I think that's yeah. a beautiful place to to end today. So yes. happy new moon, everyone. Happy new moon. And peace, love, and Bitcoin. Peace, love, and Bitcoin. Thank you for joining us for another episode of the Bitcoin Zodiac podcast. We hope you enjoyed our discussions about the evolution of Bitcoin viewed through the lens of financial astrology. This podcast does not offer financial advice, so please make sure you do your own research. And stay tuned for our next episode where we will continue to dive deeper and build off these perception-expanding topics. Remember, whatever your beliefs may be, we all have something to learn from each other. So stay curious, stay open-minded, and keep exploring the world of Bitcoin and astrology. As always, may the stars align in your favor and your crypto investments prosper. Until next time, peace, love, and Bitcoin.